It's about to go down. Burning your ears with another all-killer and no-filler episode of the best motorsports radio on the planet. It's the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. With your host, Jim Bieber. Sliding trophy trucks, jumping razors, and dropping the mic at events across the country. Amy Hood. What's up, guys? I'm a professional fun haver, dirt bike rider, and monster truck driver. With support from Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, and Dirtfish. Hang on tight, strap in, and get ready to smoke some tires and lay some roost. Here's the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other. Jim Beaver. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, i got to correct myself. I said, what's up, guys? I meant, what's up, guys and gals? Men and women, that is right. We uh, have a great following of both uh, men and women here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. I'm sure part of that is because of uh, Amy Hood, my magical co-host. But uh, we've got an interesting show today. A lot of pre-taped segments we're going to be dropping in. I was out at the Long Beach, not the Long Beach Grand Prix, man, the Grand Prix of Indianapolis, IndyCar race, the kickoff to the month of May, or people in Indy like to call it the year of May, uh, but anyways, the biggest, baddest motorsport event on the planet, the Indy 500, um, yeah, we're only a couple of weeks away, man, uh, the month of May has kicked off, I was there for the kickoff with the Grand Prix, I caught up with... Um, a ton of IndyCar drivers. Uh, we're going to be sprinkling in those interviews the next two weeks on the show. Today, uh, we've got Zach Veach, Robert Wickens, who ran up front, almost was on the pole, almost won the darn thing. Uh, Wickens is going to be on the show. Uh, Zach Veach ran Dreddy Autosport. And then my boy, Connor Daly. Uh, you remember him from um, the amazing race this off season, but uh, Connor was on at the beginning of the year. Signed a big deal with Monster Energy. He's going to be racing uh, uh, IndyCar. And then another announcement that he's going racing NASCAR later on this year, but to Anyways, Connor Daly, he's going to be on the show as well. Um, we've got some massive, massive announcements to talk about, about Travis Pastrana. Uh, he's recreating three of Evil Knievel's jumps all in one night. We're going to be talking about that. we got Lucas and Baja, the Baja 500, lots of Mexico talk. Um, Formula D popping this past weekend. I don't know. We've got a slam-packed show. we got Amy Hood locked in for the first two segments. Then after that, it's all me and a bunch of IndyCar drivers. So hang tight, strap in. It's going to be one hell of a show. Show today on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side by side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount thanks for tuning in to the down and dirty radio show available live online in syndication on networks across the u.s and available internationally on the american forces network and we are back here on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor jim b ramey hood kicking off another edition of your favorite action motorsports radio show and I got to tell you, Hood, you and I have both been busy. I was at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Indy Grand Prix. Uh, you were testing monster trucks. How did that go? <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, I love an opportunity um, to go out to MJU, kind of hone my skills. And, uh, you know, working with Tom Entz is absolutely incredible. The guy is a genius. Um, but, it, you know, I'm, I have a couple more shows coming up this fall, so uh, I really wanted a little bit uh, behind time behind the wheel to perfect some of my new tricks up my sleeve, Jim. Yeah, I guess it's like a just like an FMX guy or anything, right? You're just always pushing yourself, BMX rider. Like, you know, you got to go to the next level, you know. It's like you got in at the ground floor, you've worked your way up, worked your way up, you know, and it's like there's bigger and better tricks to be had. You always got to continue to innovate to be, you know, on top of the field. So I guess it's no different than any anything else in freestyle, right? Oh, absolutely. But, um, you know, it's, it's different because it's not like any other type of motorsport or sport in general where – if you suck at something, you can go out and practice and train until you get good at it. Well, it's not that easy for us to practice on a monster jam truck. So, um, you know, we're either watching videos, talking to our fellow athletes, but I mean, man, it's, it's hard to, you know, progress unless you actually get the opportunity to practice or else you're just practicing in a show. So super fortunate that I got to go down to MJU. And I mean, man, Tom is the epitome of an innovator, you know, with Monster Jam, with the things that he knows and how he can explain it. Um, you know, I will never get that type of knowledge watching YouTube videos of, and, you know, nose wheelie. So I'm super fortunate to have him, the professor, 11-time world champion, you know, as our instructor. So it's pretty cool. I love it. I'm ready, Jim. I'm ready for my fall season. I'm going out with a bang, that's for sure. Well, I mean, Zombie and I are just getting started, let's say that. Well, it's like anything. It's like me and trophy trucks. Every time I pull that thing out of the garage, you just start writing check after check after check. <laughs> you know, it's like people, you, you can ha- you can own a trophy truck, but you can, it's not like you can just go out and practice in it, right? So, like, for me, mm-hmm. it's been great with Polaris Razors because it's not a trophy truck, but it's kind of a miniaturized yeah. version, you know? You're so right. I, I can go out and You're train right. in Absolutely. that. It's like... I can kind of transition that stuff over into the trophy truck. But with monster trucks, like, there's no such thing as a mini tr- monster truck. I mean, I guess there <laughs> is, but it's not like it's different, you know? So it's not like you can – Well, yeah, I it's know. not re- – it is. You're right. Like, I mean, there's – because I come from a two-wheel background, so any type of knowledge I can get on four wheels is obviously going to be a huge help. Um, I – you know, my first year, I tried to drive a monster truck, like a dirt bike. When I hit a jump, I would literally be trying to move my body in the seat like I would on a bike. But, you know, you almost ha- I have to relearn how to drive a motorized vehicle on a different discipline, on um, very different type of mentality things. But even going to Dirtfish, you know, br- bringing me to Dirtfish, learning about weight transfer, I mean, I, I get that. But the four-wheel side of the world is very, very different, a lot more technical and a lot more like calculating what you're going to do before you go out and do it, knowing exactly, you know, what type of hits, how they're going to send you, what the truck is going to react to. Um, You know, I learned a lot about different type of hits this week um, or last week when I was at MGU, um, you know, different angles and um, 
different types of ways to hit where, again, we're trying to eliminate breakage. So we, 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 want, we don't want to try something dumb out in the middle of an arena. Obviously, it looks cool for the fans. It's great, but we're still a business. You know, we have to learn how to put on a fantastic show, be entertaining, but keep in the mind of the business and not just go out and thrash these, you know, amazing machines that the Monster Jam is so, we're so fortunate to be able to drive. So it's all about learning how to preserve those vehicles, but put on the most epic show possible. So, um, but I would like to think, you know, I would love something that I can go and at least practice some of these hits, but I don't think it's going to be legal. I think I'm going to get a lot of tickets and I'm pretty sure I will lose my driver's license in about a week, Jim, if I were to actually go and try to figure out how to train for Monster Jam. It's funny. It's funny you mentioned that it's a business though. Like I laugh because you mentioned it's a business and it's like, yeah, I guess, you know, like if you were to burn a truck to the ground, the fans would go absolutely insane thinking it's the raddest thing ever. Right. But Feld's sitting there going, Holy crap, we just burned a you know million dollar truck to the ground. I guess it'd be like, did you read just now at Disneyland? I just saw something. So they've got their big parade, right? And they've got this dragon and like in the parade it's all for show. Like somebody comes and slays the dragon and the dragon actually it's yeah. this big mechanical thing that blows fire. So this guy right. goes and he slays the dragon. Well the dragon, the fire breathing dragon malfunctions, so when he slayed it, uh, instead of spit fire, actually the whole dragon in the parade caught fire and burned to the ground in front of everybody. Oh the crowd my thought God. it was rad, but there's a video going around on the internet, and this literally is dragon like metal chunks are falling off into the into the street at Disneyland, and I thought it was the raddest thing ever. And I'm like, there's somebody at Disney that lost their job over this, but it made for oh such a great my. video clip. Uh, Goodness, well, okay, a I hope no one got hurt, but b you know the fans don't. I, I mean, if no one got hurt and it was like a safe type of environment where, you know, this giant dragon just burned to the ground. I mean, by all means, the fans have no idea what's going on. They think it's an epic entertainment show and all people clapping except behind closed doors, yeah. right? <laughs> but with Monster Jam, it's like time and a place. You know, if you are going into Monster Jam World Finals, you're, you know, Adam Anderson, son of a digger, and you're killing it and you're, you know, going for that World Final win. And, you know, we have a packed stadium, merchandise selling out of the doors. You know, every seat is full. Every kid is on their, the seat of their pants, you know. You know, that is the time and place to burn it down. And, you know, that's when you have to keep the business mind and, and tell. You know, when I do arenas, it's all about preservation. We have a long, long, long shows. You know, in, in Chicago, we have six shows. You know, we bet, we can't be going thrashing things on a Friday afternoon matinee show when we have a show come Monday. You know, it's you got to really be smart about it. And I've learned that from year one to year two. Like, year one, I'm uber competitive, just want to win. And that's what you're, I'm thinking about. But, um, you know, this year, you know, really listening to everybody around. You can get really caught up in the, the lights and the hype and the drama, you know, around the whole thing. You're, you know, you're blinded by the light. You know how it is. But your second year, you sit back, and I was like, okay, I love this. I want to be here for a long time. I'm going to do what it takes and what's necessary to, you know, keep um, Monster Jam and my fans happy and work in that in-between, you know, where you can find that happy medium. So uh, it's cool. So meanwhile, you were there doing that. Now you're in Winnipeg. I was at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the kickoff to the month of May, and uh, they like to call it the year of May in Indianapolis because literally – I've never been to a city. I've fallen in love with Indianapolis. It's only the third time I've ever been there. Um, But literally, like, the entire – you can go into any bar anywhere in the town. Everybody knows what's going on. They've got a favorite IndyCar driver. They can talk IndyCar. Like, it's crazy that an entire city – you know, they call it the racing capital of the world. It absolutely is. Like, to go there – and this is the kickoff. I haven't been to the Grand Prix yet, you know. So, this is the road race that kicks off the entire month. And, like – like. It's just crazy the who's who of entertainment. Like I guess they just mm-hmm. said like Kelly Clarkson is now gonna sing the <sighs> open for the Indy five hundred. Like it's entertainment, celebrities, David Letterman was yeah. there. Like it's just like I don't know, and it's such an old place. Like it's beautiful, but it's like vintage and like they've tried to modernize yeah. it a bit, but they've kept like the vintage feel. Like, you know, it's like you don't want to change something that's been around for a hundred years and make it all modern. You know, it's like, no, you know, no, definitely its... keep the heritage behind it. But yeah, um, so... I've actually, I've only been to Indy to be at the um, Indianapolis um, uh, trade show. I've never actually seen a motorsports event in Indy, but and I think that we really need to have um, a vote here. If Indy is 
the motorsports capital of the world, as you say, or America? I don't think so. I think it depends on what sport you're in is where you're going to go. You know, North Carolina and all the NASCAR side and blah, 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 you know, no, like North Carolina is a hub. India is a hub. But what about California? That is like the mecca of motorsports. If you want to go to become anybody in racing, you know, I mean, two-wheel base or off-road base, you start there. So I just think, like, what 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 demographic is Indy the mecca of motorsports? Well, is that, would you, I, like, the classic I'm going to pitch? I'm going to answer this, but we're going to go to a break, and when we come out, because I'm going to go way long on this. Like, this is going to yeah, be a no, good conversation. Is, I, don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. All right. I agree to disagree. You and I agree to disagree all the time, which is great. So it makes the show awesome. (laughs) And we are going to touch base on this as soon as we come back from the break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. Just before the break, we kind of started getting into it was going to be an epic debate and uh so i we got to continue this on so basically i was in indianapolis over the weekend i said it's the motorsports capital of the world it literally there's nah. signs there that say that and uh amy yeah. says no i say yes i'll give you my reasoning and then you can give me your reasoning and we'll we'll, we'll kind of debate this and you fans that are listening in hit us up on social media i don't care what form of social media we're, like uh, we're hear... starting a Twitter war right now. You know this, two wheels versus four. Yeah. It's going to get insane on 
on social media, prepare. Yeah. You know, we just open so, the floodgates. Go. Your point. Okay. Now. All right. So, I mean, first off, this is like the 102nd year of the Indy 500. So, I mean, it's been around since – all right. Cars could actually freaking drive, period. So it's been when around. I mean, you, you know, they basically block up an entire month. You look at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, who goes there. Um, yeah, obviously they run Indy cars there. Um, what is it? I mean, MotoGP has gone there. Um, you've got Formula One that's gone there. NASCAR wanted a piece of it. NASCAR goes and races there. The Brickyard 400, one of the most iconic NASCAR events, only to Daytona. Indy cars, do they go to Daytona? Hell no. They don't need Daytona. They don't need NASCAR country. They do their own thing. So you've got all of that working in. I mean, celebrities, this place, it packs 150,000 people into this thing come race day. I mean, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know any motorsport event. You tell me an entire motors, any motorsport event anywhere in the world that takes an entire month because it's that big. The entire month of May is dedicated to the Indy 500. It takes an entire month to qualify. They have so many people wanting to qualify in. They start bumping people out. I mean, it's like it's insane. Like, I mean, it's been around 102 years. It's that big. It takes an entire month to put on this event. So I don't know. I mean, it's you know, I you you're gonna bring in the two wheel argument. Okay, I I agree. There's some big two wheel events, but I mean. Indy 500's got Fernando Alonso coming over from mm-hmm. Europe. Danica Patrick. Is so I mean, they big. had Lady Gaga drive with Mario Andretti. Okay, yeah. so I'll give you that one. Yeah. Danica wants to. Her. She wants to cap off her career at the Indy 500. It's so big. Danica didn't want to cap it off at Daytona. Danica's like, no, it's got to be at Indy. Okay, I agree. Where I love the fact that Indy gives the opportunity to mix motorsports with um, entertainment culture. Um, you know, it brings in all elite worlds, if you will. You know, celebrities meet motorsport celebrities meet, you know, pe- like the entertainment, the media side, um, rock stars, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you do have the elite of the elite, right? I mean, you don't really see Lady Gaga jumping in, uh, you know, on the back of Ryan Villapoto's dirt bike, really. I didn't see that happening at all. But, um, you know, with Monster Jam, our show's in L.A. L.A. is a huge, at the Staples Center, um, you know, we roll out the red carpet for a lot of the stadium uh, Monster Jam shows in California because that's where a lot of the celebrities live. Um, um, tons of people were walking the red carpet. Um, I, I can't think of all the names right now, but tons of the uh, country music singers, rock stars, um, a, a couple of uh, movie stars. Uh, but it's because they have kids. So they come, bring all their families, and we roll it all out. We do, like, really cool press stuff, and they have the opportunity, you know, to obviously be Grave Digger and their, their favorite Monster Jam athletes. But um, I think it's really cool that they, you know, shine that spotlight there in California. But for me, Jim, as a little girl, um, and this is, I'm totally vouching for the two-wheel side of the world, and I think anybody on social media, if you're tuning into this debate right now, you will agree. If you want to become a professional motocross racer, at some point in your career, you hightail your bike in the back of your pickup truck or a moto van, and you go to Southern California. That is where all the test tracks are, all the factory, all the factory manufacturers, majority of all the, um, you know, brand like headquarters are based in SoCal, Corona, um, uh, Oceanside, like Orange County and Temecula Marietta Riverside is known as like bro central. I've met people there when I moved in 2007, you know, chase my dreams of driving two wheels who are still there, Jim, like. It's kind of weird. I mean, it's cool when you get into it, like the Temecula vibe. But, um, you know, that is the niche of all niches. If you want to go to be a moto kid, you go to SoCal. Well, I'll agree with you there. If you want to be a motocross racer, you definitely go to SoCal. I mean, I would say Mm -hmm. Indy, I mean, if you want to drive sprint cars, you want to be in Indianapolis or that area. Drag racing, it's the drag racing mecca. I mean, Um, you're the off-road guy, you know, now with this, like, you know, evolution of the razors. Where can you do all, you know, in California, you got desert on desert on desert, and, uh, and it kind of goes into Arizona but, where you're but they from. All come to, where do they have that on East? They, yeah, they all come to the Arizona for desert, you know what I mean? Like, well, they soak up. Basically, if you want to be an off-road racer, you live in the tri-state area. Between Vegas, Phoenix, and L.A. and San Diego, there's like a, a triangle there. And if you're anywhere in that for off-road, you're solid. So, yeah, that's definitely the mecca. But, I mean, motorsports as a whole, like, Indy is just massively huge. It's, uh, I don't know. It, it's just so, so big. Yeah, I agree. Indy is definitely that iconic race. And I think that, 
there will always be this, like, I watch Indy because of everything around it, you know, when they do the open. It's like the Super Bowl. You know, the Indy 500 is like the Motorsport Super Bowl. So I will give it that where the prestige and the heritage definitely makes it, like, you know, it will be that legendary um, venue, you know. It's, but it's just a venue. If you want to go and engulf your entire life with that motorsports culture, I believe that the Mecca is in, in California. Uh, well, I don't know. I wouldn't say that. It depends what you want to do because if you want to be a NASCAR, exactly. if you want to be an NASCAR yeah. driver, you definitely don't move to Indianapolis. You move to Charlotte. Oh no, you but, go to Charlotte. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's one of those things. You know, if you want to be a Formula car driver, you move to Europe. So it's yeah, it all depends on what you do. I mean, what you want to be. I mean, it, it's I don't know. I would say Indianapolis is it, one place where everything it, converges. Super Even, biker, but you know, super bike stuff. You go to Europe too. You know, I agree. It's. There is a place all over the map now, and, and it's funny because California kind of got a little burnt out, and a lot of people did end up kind of transitioning, going to Florida, um, you know, Texas, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I'm a little soft spot on for, for California because it was always my dream as a little girl to go ride dirt bikes over there. Yeah. And what do you know, Jim? I now live right half the year in San Diego. I love San Diego. Um, I hate mm-hmm. L.A. with a passion. I've got a bunch of friends oh, that live in L.A. Too. You know no, what? If L.A., if they get rid LA. of the traffic, I would love L.A. But seriously, get rid yeah. of the traffic. If, if yeah. That's my deal. I I know there's – I either need to move to L.A. and own a helicopter or they just need to get rid of the, the traffic and then we'd be solid. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, Amy, I know you got something cooking. You've got to go, but uh, we'll uh, – Playing know. softball. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm subbing in for my neighbor. I got new neighbors here in Canada. And I'm going to play some softball, Jim. Okay. I don't know how good I'm going to do. I don't do team sports. But we're going to give it a go. So yeah. Don't um, don't slide because I guarantee you you're going to end up like I'm going to get a text later and you're going to have this big bruised strawberry looking thing on your hip. Like I guarantee it if you slide, that's what's going to happen. I know. I need to do this in like full motor gear. I think it'd be way better. But uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, I got back on two wheels now for the rest of the summer. So stay tuned. Keep following my social media. We'll be all, doing all sorts of fun stuff and a lot of wild adventures. All righty, Amy. We will uh, catch up with you soon. Bye. <laughs> and you want to talk about a fun debate. Uh, so now that Amy is, uh, I guess, off air, but uh, I, I put this out on uh, on Twitter while we were debating here, and um, yeah, you guys, I, I want to hear from you throughout the show all week. I know we get a lot of people delay listen. You're well, you know, and and we're live now. If you're listening on American Forces Network or um, you know, or in national syndications, delayed by a day. This is one of those. I want to hear from you throughout the week, especially on Twitter. You can use my Facebook group. It's facebook.groups-jimbeaver15. I think it's Jim Beaver's Action Motorsports Discussion is what it's called or something. But, um, you know, or, I, anyways, I want to hear from you guys. Seriously, though, Indianapolis, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Indianapolis as a whole, is it the racing capital of the world? I still say yes, not saying that there isn't meccas and hotbeds other place. I mean, if you want to be an off-road driver, yeah, you don't move to Indianapolis. You, you, traditionally, you just don't, right? But IndyCar, Sprint Cars, um, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, drag racing, it's all at Indianapolis. I mean, Supercross goes to Indy. You've got NASCAR going to the Brickyard 400. I mean, it's an iconic event. The PRI show is in Indianapolis. I mean, Delara Chassis, you go down the list of manufacturers and companies that are based in Indianapolis. Race trailers. You want a race trailer? Indianapolis, like half of the manufacturers in the country for race trailers are in Indianapolis. I'm just saying, like, that place, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't been there, I guess you probably don't really grasp how massive it is. But safety manufacturers, Impact, you know, they're based in Indianapolis and, uh, it's just there's a massive amount. Yes, Charlotte is a hotbed for stock car racing, um, but I think everything else, uh, you know, within reason, like Indianapolis, it's just it's a big freaking deal. Period. End of story. So this is one of those. This debate's gonna. There's no right or wrong. This is one though. I think we can have uh, some solid discussion. I put it out there on uh, 
On Twitter, we had uh, one of our listeners, Paige, she chimed in, and uh, she says, I'm from Charlotte, and I vote Indianapolis. So uh, there you go, man. Uh, but I would love to hear from you guys. If you're tuning in, uh, hit us up. It's at Jim Beaver 15 at AmyHood71. Tag us both on Twitter or the Facebook groups, um, you know, or, or however you want to get a hold of me. But I would love to hear your opinion. doesn't matter if you listen to this live or if you're listening to it a week from now. We want to know what your take is on this. Uh, I think we're going to revisit this topic again next week as well with all your responses. So uh, this is going to be an ongoing discussion the next couple of weeks here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. What is the racing capital of the world? Or, you know, I guess technically is Indianapolis the racing capital of the world? So, um I don't know. I vote yes. Boom. Hand raised right now. I am saying yes, Indianapolis is. And this is from a dude from the Southwest. But uh, I would love the fans' take on this or racers' take, whoever, man. If you're, uh, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, let us know at Jim Beaver 15 at AmyHood71 or Facebook.com dash group slash Jim Beaver 15. It's Jim Beaver's Action Motorsports Discussion. Post up. Let us know your thoughts. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably uh, next week get your answers on the show, that's for sure. Maybe on later on today. So we're going to take a short break. We come back. Ah, Travis Pastrana, he's got some big news. We're going to talk about it all that after the break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast. And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. 
All right, and we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, kind of doing it uh, indie, indie car field today, Indy 500, Indy Grand Prix. Um, man, I am a big Indy car fan. You know, we started the show out, and it was strictly off-road. I've always been a motorsports fan of just about everything but NASCAR. Just being honest, just being honest, you guys know this, um, but uh, not to say I don't appreciate it, I just, uh, yeah, they, they've got some issues, and, um, you know, so now being able to uh, talk about, all, we've grown big enough, I guess we've uh, got enough street cred that we can uh, book some IndyCar interviews and NHRA interviews and talk, like, competently about it, and uh, um, you got to build your way up, though, right? You don't start at the top, and I'm not saying that starting in off-road was starting at the bottom, I'm just saying that I was a trophy truck racer. I knew what I was talking about, and I could competently put on a show about that stuff. Now, the audio quality was bunk back in the beginning, but, um, yeah, so here we are. We fast-forward uh, six years, and um, boom, we're at Indianapolis Motor Speedway interviewing IndyCar drivers, right? Um been a whirlwind adventure, that's for sure. But uh, um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to be uh, to be able to just talk all things motorsport. You know, just rad stuff, right? I've always said we're a personality driven show. We're a show about, uh, you know, we're not a results show. If you're tuning in wanting me to give you the rundown on the top 20 drivers or, you know, or whatever, eh, it's not going to happen. But if you want us just to talk to rad people about rad topics, then uh, we're your show. Um, so, yeah, that was today. I mean, we're, we're interviewing, you know, a couple of rookies. I, I say that loosely. I mean, uh, Zach Veach, uh, you know, obviously he's a rookie with Andretti Autosport, but Robert Wickens, I mean, this guy's got, he's almost 30. He's got an insane career. He's a rookie IndyCar driver, but he's not a rookie. We're seeing that by his results. But he's coming up in hour number two along with Zach Veach and my good friend Connor Daly. Um, great to catch up with him. Amy and I actually had dinner with Connor uh, at the Long Beach Grand Prix. Um, so, uh, you know, able to talk uh, like Amazing Race and some of the other stuff he's got, you know, did in the off season. Just a rad dude, man. He's uh, he's all over the place, but signed a big deal with Monster Energy. He's coming up next hour as well. Um, but right now we got uh, some big news out of NASCAR and Travis Pastrana we are going to talk about. And uh, a lot of you guys, uh, hopefully, I don't know if you're bouncing, hopefully you guys are watching, I guess, at Indianapolis uh, they're on track now, right? Practice. They are out on track. So hopefully you guys are watching that and on mute and you're listening to the down and dirty radio show as well. So that's what I'm hoping for. But anyways, that is happening at Indianapolis today. Practice has started. They are on track and uh, man, they're getting these cars, uh, tuned up for uh qualifying this weekend at indianapolis motor speedway and um man i gotta tell you we'll, we'll talk about the schedule and bump day and that coming up later in uh later in the show but uh um it, it's pretty big another big announcement though um nascar up for sale that is right nascar is up for sale ah uh, where do we even go with this um i know a lot of you guys are nascar fans that do tune into this show um Man, uh, you know, you want to know, uh, uh, you, you want to know my feelings why they're up for sale. They've lost their fan base. Ratings are going down. It's hard to get sponsors. They got too big and too arrogant. And I, I mean, I've got some friends that work in NASCAR, but it's the truth. Like you get that big and bloated. I mean, you look at the schedule and it's 30 some races. The races are like four hours long. Like people don't want to tune into that. I mean, it's expensive to go to the track. They wonder why attendance is dwindling. It's not because they don't like the drivers and things like that, but man, when it costs you like 500 bucks for a family of four to go to the race and have a hot dog and a beer, like, um, it's just, it got too big, got too bloated. Um, you know, and then they've got all, you know, I, I don't want to say gimmicks, but that's what they are. Right. You've got the chase, um, you've got the chase and you've got all these, you know, stage racing and it, it's just too damn much. NHRA is doing fairly well. I mean, uh, you know, sponsors, they've got some long-term sponsors. Um, you know, drivers are all over the media right now. They've got a, a powerful group of men and women with personalities that are racers. They're packaging it, uh, doing a phenomenal job. I know we talked with Leah Pritchett last week on, on some of that and what NHRA is doing, but, um, Man, I mean, the races are, what, three to four seconds long, right? People can tune in for that. They're killing it on social media. Um, you know, they, they consolidate the TV package where it's boom, run after run after run. It's not a bunch of dead time. 
Um, it's, you know, it's definitely impressive what they've done. IndyCar, man, have you been to any of these events? I mean, granted, like, I know Phoenix was bad, but Long Beach set attendance records. TV ratings are high. I mean, it's... They got more cars coming in, bumping's back at Indy, so they're doing something right. And then you got NASCAR; they're throwing gimmicks at things, you know, and, and nothing's working, right? Me, right off the top, boom! I'd whack like I don't know eight events off the schedule, boom! Go down to like twenty-five events right away, boom! Whack them, and then you know some of these events where you're running two two times at a track, no. That doesn't happen. You get one race a year unless you're super, super special, right? Um, so one race a year or they make it different. Like they're doing at Charlotte, right? They're running this new road course at Charlotte uh, later on in the year. Like that's rad. I can get behind that. So uh, add more road courses. Fans love them. T ratings are super high for those. Why not add more road courses? Uh, those are some of the highest attended events on the IndyCar calendar. NASCAR, boom, what are you thinking, right? Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think there's stuff like that. Get rid of this stage racing and all that crap. It's garbage. Throw it away. Um, you know, run it start to finish. You want to bunch things up for the final 10 laps? All right, throw a mandatory caution 10 laps from the finish, right? Mandatory caution 10 laps from the finish. And then, uh, you know, regroup everybody and let them shoot out. So what Short Course does, right? And we did it in Terracross this last year. Uh, halfway through the event, it's a mandatory caution. They bunch the field up and then let them race to the finish. I could see NASCAR doing that with 10 to go. Um, you know, that way somebody doesn't have half a lap lead. Like, just bunch everybody up. So I'd have no problem with that. Um, don't do it two to go, but do it like 10 to go. So there's actually some racing that's going to be had. But I don't know. There, there's all kinds of stuff. But they are up for sale. Uh, you know, I, I think they're just exploring to see the value and the worth of the series and um you know and and some of that type of thing it's not like they've got suitors gosh to buy a a multi-billion dollar company i think formula one was it four five million six million that formula one sold for it's the biggest motorsport in the world nascar is not worth that but you know nascar is north of a billion uh maybe two billion territory i mean they own imsa they own tracks they own uh they've got a lot of a lot of assets so uh, they're worth a few billion, I would say. Um, so I'm sure they're just exploring that. You know, they, I think they've got some TV contracts due, title sponsorship. They need to find one of those. Uh, Monster Energy's, you know, check it out. So uh, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot going on in NASCAR world. That was massive news across the board, though, in uh, in motorsports circles. So NASCAR up for sale. What do you know? So we got to talk a little fun, though. My boy Travis Pastrana, TP, TP199. Um, obviously, he's tied in with uh, Polaris, uh, as am I. We had him in the Star Car last year. Um, he also has done some stuff with Slingshot, one of the other Polaris brands. And um, now he's doing something with Indian Motorcycle. And uh, he's recreating. So this is in Las Vegas, July 8th. Um, Sunday, July 8th, it's going to be aired live on the history network. Um, but Pastrana basically teaming up with Indian and Nitro Circus, and uh, he's going to recreate three of Evil Knievel's iconic jumps, and he's going to do it all, uh, in one night. So the car jump, uh, Evil, uh, jumped, um, um, He's recreating these to a T. So he's going to jump over 52 stacked, uh, uh, 52 crushed cars. Um, he's going to jump 14 buses. Oh, 16 buses. Uh, 16 buses. And then he's going to jump the fountain at Caesar's Palace. So all three jumps all in one night. And the kicker is, like, these things have been recreated and they've been redone, right? But they were all done on, like, dirt bikes, like CR500s and stuff when Robbie Knievel did it. And, you know, Twitch backflipped the fountains and things like that. But... They weren't done like on a true like Evil did these on Harleys, right? So Pastrana's doing these on an Indian Scout, um, like a flat track bike. So I tip the cap to TP. He could do these in his sleep on a dirt bike, but you throw in the fact that he's actually doing it on a bike similar to what Evil did him on. Um, man, that's big. That's huge. That's massive. So uh, this is all uh, this is all happening in July um, in Las Vegas. Um, the cool thing is if you're not in Vegas, I mean, this is going to be aired live Sunday night, uh, July 8th. So I am very, very excited about this. Uh, I, I think stuff's been kind of floating on around for a week or two, but, uh, I just saw in the last day or so, like some sol solid, like, you know, TV time slots and info and all that stuff. So thought we should bring it up. I can promise you 
Uh, Travis will be on the show at some point in the next month and a half to talk about this. We will make that happen. Uh, he and I were texting last week on something. So um, it's not going to be hard to get Travis on the show to talk about this, the shenanigans that he has planned. So um, bank on that one. Uh, TP199 will be on the show. But uh, he's got this big deal, Evil Knievel. It's, uh, you know, he's posted some stuff up. I know um, – there's uh it's on indian motorcycles website uh and i gotta tell you i was i'm a big fan of indian motorcycles not just because of the players thing but because of the scout bobber holy crap look at their scout bobber it's all a matte black thing is the raddest motorcycle i've ever seen um not only that their flat track bikes are rad too so um yeah it's definitely uh uh definitely gonna be an exciting thing it's gonna be hotter than hell the middle of july in las vegas though they could have done this thing in the fall don't you think like man um, but if you're going to watch, you're going to sweat. Um, but, uh, it'll be a good time had by all, I'm sure. And travel probably most likely slay the whole damn thing because that's generally what Travis Pastrana does. So, um, yep, yeah, that's happening. Um, other news and notes, obviously we got, um, big news this weekend. We got Lucas in Baja, uh, and then we've got, uh, they call it, uh, Midwest Short Course League, that starts in Cranon. Uh, I got some big announcements coming out about that. I know I just got a PR as we were on air. It looks like they got $87,000 purse for uh, pro classes at the uh, Cranon event. But uh, Lucas, first off, they are in Baja uh, this weekend. It's so crazy. This also kick off to pre-running in Baja So uh, for the Baja 500. So pre-running this weekend in Baja, you've got uh, the Lucas, uh, Lucas uh, Short Course event there at Estero Beach. Um, and then, you know, turn around, you got Memorial weekend, which is the biggest weekend in motorsports. And you turn around and you got Baja 500, the 50th anniversary one the following weekend, man, it's, uh, <laughs> the people of Ensenada and we've got actually a lot of, uh, Mexican listeners to the show from Ensenada. Um, you guys have a couple of amazing weeks ahead of you. Let me just say that. Like if you're an off-road fan, Ensenada is the place to be the next few weeks, um, It's going to be off the chain or ad for everybody in Baja. But uh, if you're not, weather's decent down there right now. And uh, it'd be worth a drive from L.A. or San Diego for one of the two weekends. But uh, that track at Estero Beach is gnarly. Let me tell you, they've got that whoops section. And I know they massaged it. But uh, the pro light trucks, man, there's always some crazy crash. And they all say it's like a commitment, a crazy commitment to go through those whoops. Like uh, the way it's all set up, like – it's like a dirt bike in the, you know, like you watch in Supercross, right? If you're slow, you, you got to go either really slow, but if you kind of half ass it, you get all crossed up and it makes it really tough. So you got to commit and just flog it uh, to get over it. And it's the same thing with a pro light truck and those whoops in a sterile beach. And if you just lift for a hair, a truck gets out of shape and boom, it's like snap roll time. So uh, it's an exciting one. Definitely uh, Lucas Oil app. I'll be tuned in this weekend to be watching uh, live from Estero Beach on the Lucas app. So, uh, yeah, man, it's a big weekend in Baja, big couple of weeks in Baja, big weekend in Indy, uh, Pastrana, NASCAR. I don't know. We've touched about just everything in this segment, but uh, we are going to take a short commercial break. Um, we come back. we got got Dirtfish Rally Report. Got some uh, news coming out of one of my podcasts. And Connor Daly kicking off hour number two here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. 
Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. And we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. As it said in the <laughs> during the break, all killer and no filler. That's definitely today. Hopefully you guys are an IndyCar fan, because we got a ton of that coming at you. Um, but I uh, do want to uh, give a plug or shout out to uh, my other show, Project Action on podcast one it's a sister show to the down and dirty radio show sometimes we swap content back and forth um this week i've got a very special guest one you're going to want to tune into chris mazder um he is the first ever you remember him from the olympics in korea um a couple of months back he's the first ever um medalist in luge uh, our united states medalist in luge um, so he's a professional loser, but now he's on dancing with the stars and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but he is, uh, he's just a rad dude. Um, this guy is an amazing interview. You guys are going to love it. Spent a good 40 minutes with, uh, Mazder, but, uh, I think you guys are going to, going to love that one. Um, like I said before, this guy, you want to talk about does stuff fast. Anybody that, you know, <laughs> goes 80 miles an hour on their backside down on ice-filled mountain uh, is rad in my book. But Chris Mazur, he's on Project Action this week. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, easiest way to get it, or tune in on Podcast One or my website. Um, speaking of my website, if you guys haven't noticed, um, go over to downanddirtyshow.com. We are punching out a ton of content. We've got a staff writer currently um, just pumping out like eight to ten pieces of content a week, written content, um, you, you know, everything from TV times with motorsports, what's happening this weekend, event recaps, results, who to watch, what's happening in off-road, in IndyCar, in rally, in drifting, Supercross, motocross, it's all coming at you, um, and we're covering it. So Down and Dirty Radio Show, we got two shows a week, Down and Dirty Show and Project Action. You'll also be able to get Amy's show there as well, but we got a ton of written content being cycled in there as well. So easiest way to keep in the loop on all that, though, is definitely uh, down is my Facebook at Jim Beaver 15 or, uh, or the group, uh, my Facebook group there that uh, keeps continuing to grow. And uh, uh, we're up to about 500 members of the group right now. So it's is slow growth, but uh, we're there. Definitely worth it. But uh, we're killing it on the web. So uh, thanks to my boy Chris Leone for, uh, for you know, continuing to punch and push out the content there. But, uh, uh, yeah, go and check that out. Subscribe on iTunes to all my shows. And, uh, yeah, we're going to take a short break and uh, we come back dirtfish rally report coming at you here on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor 
want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. <laughs> Kicking off hour number two here on your favorite action motorsports radio show. Uh, Line up this, I guess today, uh, <laughs> on the show this week, today. Uh, yeah, uh, we got Connor Daly, Robert Wickens, and Zach Beach. All three of them coming up here in hour number two on the show. Definitely don't want to miss that, and you don't want to miss our Dirtfish Rally Report coming at you right now. Um, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish. Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. And um, want a discount on Dirtfish? Use the coupon code JBDirtfish. It'll give you 15% off at Dirtfish Rally School. Um, so, yeah, big news coming out of Dirtfish. Obviously, they've been promoting it on social media. If you're in the Seattle area, you just want a trip to a rad time. Uh, they've got July 7th called Dirtfish Summerfest. Uh, basically, uh, they're having a big festival there at Dirtfish Rally School. Helicopter rides, uh, games for the kids. They're doing like uh, arrive, like speed runs, autograph signings. I'll be there. Jolene Van Butte will be there. Uh, should be a rad time had by all there at Dirtfish. So uh, if you guys have... You guys are looking for a little vacation. You're going to be in the Seattle area, July 7th. Do that. I'm I'm thinking, like the ideal thing is to go to. Um, so Friday you fly to Seattle. You hit up Dirtfish Summerfest on Saturday. It ends at like uh, it ends in the evening, and then you get an early flight Sunday morning to Vegas, and then you watch Travis Pastrana's jumps in Vegas on Sunday night. So I'm telling you, that's like that's the dream right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Di- I, I digress, but, uh, it happens a lot on the show, <laughs> but, um, definitely, uh, take all that in. Um, but do, we do have some massive rally in action. Uh, got to give a big shout out to Sebastian Loeb taking a victory over, um, over the past weekend. Um, but, uh, big news. We got, uh, Olympus rally happening up there in Washington state this coming weekend. We've got the Southern Ohio forest rally SOFR as it's also known. That coming up in the mid in the Midwest, so uh, two massive national rally events same weekend uh, going down, and then we've got um, World RX in England. Uh, it's Silverstone, and the kickoff to the American Rallycross Series at Silverstone as well here coming up over Memorial Weekend. So uh, I, there's a lot of rally coming at you. Mix in some WRC um, the next couple of weeks. It's um, Pretty jam-packed calendar. Uh, we've also been doing a lot of coverage of it on the website at downandirtyshow.com. But, uh, yep, that's your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week. Brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. We're going to take a short break. We come back. Connor Daly on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest, 
and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, and now it is time to kickstart. I don't know why that uh, the song Kickstart My Heart just popped into my head. Um, it did, but uh, yeah, welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, by the way. Um, anyways, yeah, I've been doing a lot of traveling, which means I've been listening to a lot of Heron Nation on Sirius XM. So one of my one of my favorite uh, favorite channels on Sirius is Hair Nation. So there you there you go, man. I'm definitely an '80s hair band lover. Um, Kickstart my heart. There you go. I don't know how we got on that, but uh, we're going to get off of it pretty quick. Uh, Anyways, uh, I was out there at the Indy Grand Prix, caught a bunch of interviews um, this week. It's Connor Daly, Zach Veach, Robert Wickens. Uh, Next week, we're going to have Graham Rahal and Alexander Rossi uh, on the show. So uh, who knows how, how, who else we're going to throw in. Um, but, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, IndyCar Hour here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Um, these are recorded uh, Friday and Saturday out at the Grand Prix. But uh, I guess we'll jump right into uh, this interview with my good friend Connor Daly. And, uh, yeah, so uh, this was taped uh, this past weekend at the Indy Grand Prix. Here's Connor Daly. All right, here at the uh, Indy Grand Prix, we got uh, buddy Connor Daly, who uh, he's not racing this weekend, man, but you guys have rolled out some uh, pretty rad announcements. I mean, let's start with uh, the announcement yesterday. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we're going to see you. We'll talk about the month of May here in a second, but uh, you're going NASCAR racing, man. That's that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's really cool. I think, um, you know, to have an opportunity just to drive anything is, is awesome. Um, and, you know, Lily Diabetes has given the, the opportunity to not only, you know, take part in an even stronger program this month of may but also to go racing in nascar for the first time so the xfinity series is going to be a lot of fun uh you know an incredible track road america i love that love that track won there before in, in a few different series so um you know it'll be something different it'll be a steep learning curve but uh but i'm excited for sure 
I mean, you've been a guy who's driven a lot in your career. I mean, uh, you know, as far as stock cars, I mean, you've got a lot of people you can pick their brains. I mean, you got any uh, any idea what to what you're jumping into quite yet from some of the friends you've talked to? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's obviously a, a big, heavy car. That there's there's no denying that. Um, you know, I think it's 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 very different with with a, a four speed <laughs> with a four speed gearbox. So uh, so yeah, I think we're we're. Um, just trying to learn from everything we can. AJ Elmeninger is a good buddy of mine. He's uh, he's been giving me a lot of tra- uh, track notes and stuff like that. So um, just excited to try and use it and, and do the best we can for Lily. So I know uh, we talked to you, uh, you know, right around uh, Amazing Race time. I guess right after that, and I got to tell you, out of everybody who had a stressful off season, I'd say. Your off scene was in was probably the most stressful out of anybody in the IndyCar paddock, but it seems like now you know Indy 500s lined up. You've got a NASCAR ride. Things are kind of sl- starting to slot together for you. Yes and no. Um, you know, obviously, you know, once this month is is over, it's, it goes back into you know sort of a, a waiting until August mode. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're putting together a few you know as many things as we can, uh, and and hopefully you know after this month of May, um, you know, it goes well. Everything everything goes uh, you know according to plan, and we and we have a good month and. You know, maybe we can do more from there. That would be the goal. That would be, uh, you know, an awesome, awesome thing to be able to continue this program. But uh, right now, all we can do is just keep working and, uh, and see what happens after that. Well, and talking about the month of May, obviously, uh, you know, you've, we've got, uh, you know, starting next week, I know you'd said you're on track on uh, Tuesday for the first time. I mean, you know, what, what do we expect heading into qualifying? I mean, obviously, race day, race weekend. You've done this before, man. It's not your first rodeo here at Indy. I mean, uh, you know, what are we looking forward to? I mean, how, how much seat time do you have any in this new, uh, you know, in this new chassis yet? I've got no seat time so far. Uh, Tuesday will be my first day in the new car. So uh, basically, you just got to try and get the car comfortable, get it, get it to where we need it to, to be for the first, um, you know, the first few days. Uh, and obviously, you know, there's 35 cars qualifying. So, uh, you know, there's only 33 make it. So we got to just make sure we're, we're in safe and we do the, you know, we do, we do the job and trying to get the car as fast as we can get it to go. Uh, and then, you know, then just work on the race car from there. So I think, uh, you know, we, I've done this before and, you know, I've done it with this team before and I think they've got a good strategy about how to approach the month. I'm excited about it. Well, that being said, I mean, obviously this new chassis, I mean, you, you know, you've got a lot of teammates who've got some experience in them. I mean, it, it seems like things have definitely changed on the ovals as well as road courses. I mean, you know what to expect with this uh, new chassis heading into, uh, you know, qualifying in that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't changed drastically when it comes to, you know, overall downforce that you could run. Uh, when it comes to like the, the race settings that we were using, but uh, but it's lighter for lo- the downforce is definitely lighter than last year, and I think that's going to be interesting. It's going to you know the, the steering is a little bit lighter. I think things are a little bit different, um, and you know all it takes is just more time on track to kind of get get used to that. Well, I know you've uh, been able to bring in some pretty rad sponsors. Obviously, Monster Energy stepped in with you. You've got uh, Air Force. I mean, uh, you know, how was is, how is that? I know you said Monster came in, and it's it's one of those things. It's not a major backing, but they've got branding on your suit and obviously your helmet and that. I mean, how's that being involved with Monster Energy? Oh, it's awesome, man. I, I, I live and breathe Monster Energy. I think everything about them uh, has been sort of... Uh, my my life. I mean, I just like to you know live a little bit a little bit on the wild side, live a little bit you know live my life, um, but also you know do the best I can in a race car and perform at the, at the highest levels. Uh, so I, I love what they do. Uh, my helmet colors have been black and green for years, so uh, it sort of fits well. And and you know it's just nice to have them here for this you know this great month. And uh, you know hopefully would love to do more with them in the future as well. Yeah, you feel like that's kind of a step into the door to the brand and, uh, you know, maybe moving forward. They're involved in so many different series and, and you know, and everything that uh, maybe there's opportunity to do something else. You know what? I, I guess you can't limit yourself to, you know, anything. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'd love to love to work with them in whatever they want. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to be going NASCAR racing by the end of the year, and they're heavily involved in NASCAR as well. So, uh, so you never know what could happen, I guess. So uh, that being said, I mean, obviously we've got, uh, you know, on track this next week, um, you know, then we've got qualifying and things like that. I mean, how do you prepare for, uh, you know, the next coming weeks? Uh, it's just about, uh, you know, going through as much data as you can. I mean, we've got a lot of access to a lot of data, a lot of um, a lot of different, uh, you know, information from the test that the team did a couple weeks ago. Um, and, and really just kind of, you know, just get mentally focused, mentally ready. Uh, and, you know, physically I've been training, you know, ever since the end of the season last year. So I'm ready to go physically and just want to be able to get in and, and, and waste no time. And, uh, and, and once we just kind of go through the process every day, uh, we'll see how it goes and how we can make the next day even better. Um, but it's all about just, just stepping through the process, you know, going through, executing all of our goals and, and not getting, um, you know, too overwhelmed with anything that we don't need to be overwhelmed with. 
So here's, uh, you know, some of the fun questions. Obviously, you did the amazing race with Rossi. I mean, how's that coming back home, you know, watching those play back air? I mean, obviously, it's one of those, you're a race car driver, and then all of a sudden, you're exposed to uh, this massive nationwide audience. I mean, is that one of those where now all of a sudden, you know, you're in oddball places you haven't been before, and people are recognizing, hey, I saw you on TV. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it happens a lot now, which is kind of weird. I mean, I would have never thought that uh, that it would have had that effect, but it's been really cool, and there's been a lot of great supporters of the show, uh, a lot of great fans of the show, and now, now new IndyCar fans, hopefully. So it's been a lot of fun to see that happen and to see it, uh, you know, almost every day someone, you know, someone has watched the show. So it's kind of cool, and, uh, and we appreciate that. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to catch up. Good luck this month, and, uh, you know, good luck in NASCAR. I'm sure we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right, that was uh, Connor Daly, who uh, today, I mean, obviously, uh, he's out on track, right? Um, it, it is practice, uh, practice number one this morning, this afternoon, uh, practice number two, I guess, there at uh, uh, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So uh, you guys can definitely tune into those. Uh, IndyCar's website, it's Facebook, I think they live stream them on both. Um, but, yeah, you guys can get locked in with uh, everything happening at Indy. Danica's on track, right? That's uh, that's a big deal. Uh, I got to see her. It, it was funny. They'd have the full teaser there at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Like uh, Ed Carpenter, obviously, they had cars in the Grand Prix. Danica wasn't anywhere on site. Um, there was no reason for her garage to be open. But they had the big Danica sign up above the garage. And then they had the Danica golf cart. And then they had her her uh, her Indy car and the GoDaddy green, right? And they had the garage door rolled up and like everything kind of sitting there. So it was like full on like teaser mode for all the fans. And it was funny because anybody who knows knows that she's not there. She's not going to be on track for like four or five days. There's no reason she's going to be in Indianapolis. There was a line of people at the garage just standing there looking into an empty garage, like hoping somehow like Danica was going to teleport to Indianapolis Motors. It was just comedic. Uh, I think I threw a picture up in my uh, Instagram stories on it or something like that, but uh, it was quite comedic. I thought it was funny anyways. Like, people wishful thinking, right? Please. It was like, they're going to do the bewitch, Samantha bewitch thing, twinkle her nose, and Danica's going to pop and right in or something. But, um, yeah. The month of May and Danica Patrick uh, it has started. Uh, but we're going to take a short break, and uh, we come back. We've got uh, Robert Wickens um, with my friends over there at, uh, uh, at Sam Schmidt Motorsports, or Schmidt Peterson Motorsports, I guess I should say. Uh, he's going to be on the line. Amazing interview. You guys are going to love that. It's going to be up next here after the break on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. extreme performance reliability and the most fun you can have on four wheels the polaris razor brings it to you but you don't need to take my word for it you can take theirs i'm tanner faust and i choose the polaris razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel what's up i'm ronnie renner and i choose polaris razor because it's the sickest most reliable side by side on the planet what's up everybody heavy d from diesel brothers listen i'm on team razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right, we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, we're going to roll right into an interview I did with quote unquote uh, rookie Robert Wickens. Uh, guy is just slaying it this year. Uh, he is not a rookie, rookie in name only. We talk about that in this interview, but he's he's absolutely just shredding the field in IndyCar. Uh, you guys are going to enjoy this one. Uh, very solid interview from a really solid race car driver. So here's Rock- Robert Wickens. All right, out here at uh, Grand Prix in uh, in Indianapolis, we got Robert Wickens uh, here. I don't know your first uh, month of May, man. How's it feel to be here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, month of May? Uh, it feels awesome. I mean, I've uh, I've raced on the Grand Prix track before, although it was like 12 years ago in Formula BMW. So obviously a lot's changed since then. But um, yeah, I mean this this whole the whole atmosphere is incredible. I mean every little detail, you know, the the special like using the garages that we use for the 500 and seeing like Schmidt Peterson Motorsports has a um, a garage theme you know respecting mechanics over the years of the 500 and it's been sponsored by Gear Wrench and it's been you know it, it's all just really cool but uh, you know if you're around go, go check it out but um, honestly I'm, just, I'm taking taking life one day at a time right now I mean right here we're in the Indy GP it's race day starting P2 for the race so I mean it's actually pretty hard not to get carried away and looking looking forward to the, to the 500 when we still have a, a race this afternoon that is worth uh, just as many points as almost all the, all the other races. So it's, it's going to be a good one. Well, and, and talking about that, I mean, in this season and talking points, I mean, uh, you know, you come in here to, to IndyCar as, I guess, quote unquote, a rookie. But, uh, uh, you know, for me, that's just it's almost hard to justify with all your experience in Europe. I mean, how's that transition been from all the European series that you've done, you know, over here to racing with IndyCar in the States? Yeah, I mean, every every new challenge is going to be difficult in different ways, right? I've been fortunate to have driven a lot of different race cars in, in my career so far. And, um, you know, and most recently driving six years for Mercedes-Benz in, in DTM. But it wasn't like uh, an IndyCar where it's the same car every year. You know, in DTM, it's similar to Formula One where every year you more or less bring a, a brand new car um, or an evolution of your car at least. So you're constantly developing constantly like trying to just feel things and and learn and improve so i feel like that helped me adjust quite a bit coming here because uh you know it's a new aero kit for everybody it's uh apart from the firestone tire staying more or less the same um i think it it made it a lot easier for inexperienced indycar drivers to come in and yeah i mean i never thought at 29 years old i would i would be a rookie but uh you know but i think it's just a uh you know even before the season started, I wasn't really interested in a rookie championship. Um, I'm always looking to be into the top 10 and not really top rookie, for example. Well, that being said, I mean, you say rookie, they called Alonzo a rookie here at Indy last year, right? So, <laughs> you know, it's, it, yeah, I guess it's just a, that name only, right? Yeah, I mean, I think Rubens Barrichello was a rookie in his first year at IndyCar as well. So, it, uh, no, I mean, I, I understand we're, I'm a rookie to IndyCar, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think maybe you could use some adjusting in the future. 
For sure. So, uh, you know, talking about this season, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned this was a good year to come in. I know talking with, uh, you know, Zach Veach earlier, he said, you know, for me to be, you know, this is the first year that I actually go and race all the tracks. He's like, it's been phenomenal because everybody, every single time you show up, it's a learning experience because it is a new car. All the data, some of it transfers, but uh, I mean, that's had to been a little bit easier, you know what I mean, with the learning curve in these cars, just because everybody's starting from scratch every weekend. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I, what I've been saying in the past is basically rookies have so many disadvantages. You know, you don't know how the schedule is. So time management and stuff like that. I mean, tiny little details, but like in St. Pete, for example, I thought I had all this time before the race and I didn't. So I was actually eating lunch backstage before the driver introductions because I didn't have time to do it any other time because I didn't do it in my 10 minutes that was allowed in, in my in my calendar. Um, but it's just understanding that, um, you know, we're an experienced driver. They just know, know the ropes. They know how to do it. And then the Firestone tire hasn't really changed that much in the last few years, minor construction stuff. But uh, in racing, in my opinion, I think the tire is the most sensitive, sensitive uh, mythical creature <laughs> of the entire car. I mean, they're uh, yeah, delicate flowers is what, uh, is, what, is what we're calling them. But it's... Honestly, it's so easy to overdrive the tire or underdrive the tire and to understand what the tire needs to get the lap time and the grip. Um, and, you know, the, the only thing that a rookie actually is level on this year opposed to another year is, in fact, just the aero kit. Fortunately for us, it's a massive part of our car, so it's, it's helped tremendously. But, you know, I, I don't think... That was squeaky. I don't think it's... Uh, yeah, I don't think it really like evens the playing field. I think it's just one less disadvantage that a rookie has. Well, that being said, I mean, uh, you know, obviously you came out swinging at St. Pete. Um, you know, we, we know the racing incident that happened, but uh, obviously you proved right away you can run up front. I mean, we saw in qualifying yesterday here at the Grand Prix. I mean, uh, you know, you were there right at the top, you know, and, you know, how, how are you feeling overall about this year and then the championship picture? Um, I'm not thinking about championships. I'm not even thinking about next week, to be honest. I'm, I mean, I'm... Uh, you know, every every weekend so far in IndyCar has been different. It's been a different feel, different culture, different everything. So, I'm honestly, I'm just not expecting anything, and I'm just kind of enjoying each day as they come. You know, I'm, I mean, I've always been a believer that uh, never expect anything in life. <laughs> um, and in my opinion, that applies for results as well. I mean, it's just the fact that, you know, we, we were P2 yesterday, did, had a great day. But free practice one yesterday actually didn't go smoothly at all. We were, I, I think, 16th or something. So the fact that we turned the day around was phenomenal. And it's hats off to the guys for all the hard work that they're doing. But we, uh, you know, but, you know, Friday here at the Indy GP wasn't the same as Friday in Barber. It wasn't the same as Friday in Phoenix. It wasn't the same Friday Long Beach or St. Pete. You know, every, every day has been entirely different in terms of scheduling, in terms of the media obligations that are demanded of us and you know some tracks you have a lot of personal time like in, in barber i felt actually kind of pretty relaxed but uh here it's kind of back into more of a full swing um busy the entire time well and you know talking about uh you know the series and the championship as a whole i mean uh, have you ever driven in a championship that's this close? I mean, uh, not necessarily in points, but I just mean week in and week out. I mean, we saw in qualifying yesterday. We're we're talking not, you know, not half a second. We're talking hundreds of a second at certain points. You know, separating positions. I mean, it seems like week in and week out, anybody can take a victory. The cars are so close. The competition's so close. I mean, you know, have you ever competed in something you know that's that tight? Yeah, I mean, for for those who. Uh, haven't watched DTM or haven't had the the privilege to to find one online or, or watch one live. I mean, in the last six years, in my opinion, I think DTM is one of the most competitive championships in the world. And we would have some qualifyings that we would have all 24 cars within four tenths of a second. You know, 300s could put you up five places, and it's it's one of those uh, things where not many people know what it is. But like so. Losing out the, the pole by eight hundredths or whatever is that I'm not surprised. That's in my opinion. That's kind of it's what a gap should be in motorsports. And um, no, I mean, but I'm not surprised that I lost out by eight hundredths because I didn't I didn't do the perfect lap. And in top championships, you have to do a perfect job to to get the best result. And we didn't uh, we did it in Q1, we did it in Q2, but we couldn't quite do it in the fast six there. So we uh, had to settle for second. 
Well, I got to ask, because uh, I've had Hinch on the show quite a bit, but uh, I know you and Hinch, uh, you guys have a good time together. You know, how, how is that? I mean, I know you guys talking with him and, and hearing you yesterday at some of the press conferences. I mean, I, there's quite a bit of, uh, you guys are very much teammates. I know a lot of people may race under the same banner, but, uh, you know, there's no data share. There's, you know, there's a line drawn in the sand, but it seems like you and Hinch both work together on the cars, you know what I mean, to help develop the best package for both of you. Yeah, but it's not even just James and I. You know, we have such an open atmosphere at Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports. The five car, the six car, when Jack Harvey's racing the 60, and I'm sure for the for the 500, when we have Jay Howard here in the seven, it's going to be the same thing. There, everything's data sharing, everything collaboration with the engineers, running like run plans. Not everyone was. We're not going to all do the same test items. You know, everyone ticks different boxes, and we just accomplish a lot, which is how a team should work. Um, so I mean, it's. I think it's very good. I think we're, we've had a very constructive, very, uh, very good relationship right now in the team, and. I think the fact that we've time in time out seemed to turn weekends around when they haven't gone super smoothly from the get-go. I mean, in the past, and in a lot of championships, if you don't hit the ground with a great car, you're in for a struggle weekend, and it's just going to be damage limitation, get as many points as you can, but you're not going to be challenging for that podium. But in Barber, we we turned it around. In Long Beach, we turned it around. Here, we turned it around. You know, we've been just doing such a great job at finding what the car needs, and it's just all down to. All the guys in the truck, all the engineers just putting their heads together and coming up with, with good improvements. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, Robert. Good luck today. Good luck the entire month of May, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. All right. That was uh, Schmidt-Peterson Motorsport driver Robert Wickens, who, uh, uh, dude, is uber, uber talented. I mean, his time in Europe, like, like we said, he, he's quote-unquote a rookie, but uh, there's no way this guy is actually a rookie. Um, just uh, – he, he, he darn near won the very first uh, event of the year at St. Pete, as he talked about him and Rossi uh, banged doors a bit and uh, didn't work out well for either one of them. But uh, he, he led up until right, you know, right at the finish. Uh, so, he, guy, he, there's big things to come from him. It's not if or when he, he wins his first uh, IndyCar race. And honestly, it could probably uh, be the Indy 500. I mean, he's he, he's got a team and a car that can run up front. So, um, you know, at this point you can't predict Indy 500 winners uh, at all, but I can give you a, a crop of five, 10 guys. I think that are going to run up front. Um, but uh, yeah, Robert Wickens, uh, very impressed with, uh, him, everything they've been able to do on track. Um, just the uh, entire uh, Schmidt-Peterson operation, just being around it, you know, doing interviews with Hinch and obviously him the past year. It's top-notch organization, and, uh, um, yeah, it's very impressive. So uh, fun catching up with Wickens. I know uh, right now I just got a uh, on my phone an update from IndyCar. I guess uh, um, they are out on track. They're uh, practicing for uh, the, the Indy 500, so cars live out on track, so, you know check it out uh uh over there on facebook live if you guys haven't already you can uh tune right in so um we are uh, gonna take a short break here on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor we got uh, zach veach with andretti autosport uh he's coming up next after the break and um you know and then we'll wrap things up here and uh let you guys enjoy the rest of your week but uh all right we'll be back after this Extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. 
For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, and we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, keeping with uh, these IndyCar interviews. And, uh, man, I had so much fun out there at uh, the Grand Prix. And uh, hopefully you guys... Uh, uh, tuning in on Facebook if you're tuning in live or uh, you know watching qual not qualifying but uh, the practice session seeing who's dropping some times there at IMS but uh, uh, yeah we're gonna roll right into uh, Andretti Autosport driver Zach Veach right about now here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor here's Zach Veach all right we are here uh, at the IndyCar Grand Prix of uh, Indianapolis, but I uh, got Zach Veach here, and I got to say, this is, uh, I, I interviewed you last year um, here at, uh, at the Indy 500, and you're a complete different uh, situation this year than you were last year. Things, things got to be pretty, pretty good to be Zach Veach right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely thankful and excited for the month of May, especially with a team like Andretti. Uh, for me, this was coming home after spending so much time in the latter series with this team that... Uh, when things kind of worked out for us to be back with him in an Indy car, it was pretty special. So I'm excited to see what, uh, how different in contrast uh, this month of May is going to be compared to last year. <laughs> well, that's that's for sure. And I know last year, I mean, you're a rookie the full time this year. Last year, I guess technically you were a rookie. I mean, you know, going into uh, the 500 last year, I mean, I know you were were thrown into a road course with basically you know zero seat time before the event. Uh, you know, and then you came into uh, you know the Indy 500. But uh, it's got to be kind of nice to to actually you know have a home now, be able to sit down and you know know what's happening week in and week out. Yeah, it's great having that process. Every, every week we're having a meeting going over what we just did or preparing for the next event. So it's just nice to have that kind of momentum. You know, you're, you're on the, the Ferris wheel. You just keep going around and around revolutions. And just each day you pick up more and more experience. So for us, this is what this whole first year is about, is just learning as much as we possibly can, push when we can, and, uh, you know, take care of things when we need to. So uh, Long Beach and Barber were great in their own perspective ways. Uh, so far, Indy GP's looking good, just trying some things that uh, have worked. Some things didn't work that last session, but I'm feeling pretty good for qualifying. Well, and, you know, speaking overall, I mean, you know, you're sitting here as a driver and, uh, you know, I hate to say as a race car driver because I race myself, but you never have stability. And you've got a little bit of stability. I mean, finding that as a driver and knowing, hey, I've got a home for it actually more than 12 months like that that's got to be a really good feeling for you yeah extremely excited that we have the three years here i mean this 
kind of build a group around my mechanics, my engineer. We have just time to kind of build those relationships that make the biggest difference in racing. And, and for me, even though we have that security, I act like this is only a one-year program because, you know, we, we want to improve and impress as, as quickly as we possibly can to show that, you know, we deserve to be here in the Verizon IndyCar Series. Well, and I know last year, I mean, uh, you know, we, we got to talk about the whirlwind because your career, I mean, uh, your career arc, obviously you came up through the ladder series. I know last year, I mean, uh, one thing I liked about you and, and, you know, obviously your stability you're getting this year with, you know, Andretti was you fought for everything you had. I mean, it, you know, it was one of those, you were grabbing the mic and doing radio for IndyCar and things like that. I mean, it, it's one of those, you know, I think a lot of drivers, they, they get, you know, I guess bummed out and they, you know, and just kind of phone it in and you were there, you were grinding, you were making calls and, uh, you know, you made things happen. I mean, you, you feel like, you know, it, it's even more gratifying knowing what you went through to get here? I think so. There's a little bit of gratification with that for sure, knowing that it was just such a monumental task, you know, getting everything done. But, you know, from day one, what got me involved with this is my simply my love for motorsports. So when I was out of the car for a while, just trying to find funding to keep going, grabbing the microphone, working with IndyCar Radio, driving the two-seater, granted those weren't exactly places I wanted to be, but I still enjoyed my time with those folks because, simply, because I love the sport and I want to be around it in any way possible. And looking back, I'm so thankful that I did those those things because, honestly, a combination of all that led me to being here with Andretti and, and finding some success in IndyCar. Well, and I know, uh, you know, I, I've talked to some people in NHRA and things like that, and I feel like you're one of those that you've seen, uh, you know, you've seen multiple sides of the industry. And, you know, even with most motorsports, I mean, I've come up from the bottom all the way to, to where I'm racing now. And, um, you know, with you, I feel like, you know, it gives you an appreciation for different positions and everybody on the team and everybody that works at IndyCar because you've been there and you've filled multiple positions. Oh, for sure. Uh, honestly, one of the best things I could have done was working with IndyCar Radio. Because I, I never realized how big of a task it was in a way of interviewing drivers or putting a show together with, with great content like they do. So for me, being able to see each little world in its own perspective and, and not only having just seeing it, but actually having to perform in each little world, you get an appreciation for how difficult things are outside the race car. So, uh, you know, I definitely learned that in the car is much easier for my, uh, my set of skills, I guess. Um, but... You know, it was great just getting that idea that, A, how much goes in, and B, there's always going to be something uh, when I reach the end of my career, for sure. <laughs> well, that's it. You've got the fallback now, right? Yeah, exactly. But we don't want to think too much about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I got to say, coming into this year, being a full-time rookie, do you feel like, you know, it's a brand new car? A lot of teams, I mean, it's rebuilding from scratch with data and, and you know, everything drivers have learned. I mean, do you feel like... If you had to pick a year to come in and be a full-time rookie, this was probably the ideal year because, you know, a lot of the team, you know, a lot of the drivers are going through the same thing you are because nobody really knows with this new car every time you go to a track. Yeah, it's perfect, especially for me and uh, the other guys that have more of a littler statue or stature, I should say. Uh, these cars are a little easier to drive than the 8,000-pound downforce monsters they had the past three years. So, you know, for me coming in, that's a benefit. It being a new car is a benefit because it handles a little more like the Indy Lights car did, and the teams are kind of starting over and rebuilding. So it's a perfect place for me to kind of plug myself in and just kind of get ahead of the ball, per se. But uh, I'm very lucky to have the three teammates that I do with Alexander Rossi, Marco Andretti, and Ryan hunter Ray. Three guys that have a ton of experience and great drivers that every session I'm seeing the one thing that I'm doing well and I'm seeing the 11 things I need to do better than my teammates are doing so it's just constant evolution of how to be a better driver and how to be quicker out there well and you talk about having three drivers and then obviously you know you've got Michael you've got Mario I mean the top to bottom I mean you've got a lot of sources you can rely on for not only information but advice and just how to handle pressure and things like that that's got to be a really good situation to be sitting in <laughs> yeah yeah it is you know for me I think uh, I'm the, my biggest critic I'm always going to be harder on myself than anyone else can and you know for me every session is an opportunity of what needs to be better and we just continue to keep progressing and learning as much as we can. And it's nice to have those guys kind of remind me every now and then I'm still just a rookie and, uh, you know, these things take time. <laughs> so when you sneak on, you know, and get a fourth place, they bring you back to earth? Is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs>
So, uh, you know, talking about uh, <laughs> talking, <laughs> oh, we got Alex Rossi playing playing some, playing games with Zach here. Um, but uh, you know, talking about uh, the ladder system and you working your way up. I mean, how has that helped play this year? Because a lot of the tracks you're going to go to, you know what I mean. You've uh, you've been at before. You know, is, is there any data? I mean, not necessarily data, but knowledge of the tracks you can bring over to these cars. A complete different animal. Yeah, certainly. The, it just helps getting up to speed a little bit quicker. You know, especially going to Long Beach. Uh, you know, Barber, all places that I've raced in in Pro Mazda or Indy Lights. And it's funny because some mistakes that you make in an Indy Lights or Pro Mazda car uh, relate to the Indy car as far as lines or, or just certain things that you had to learn the hard way about certain circuits. So uh, the road to Indy definitely prepares guys in that sense of just having kind of simple notes drawn <laughs> that uh, allow you to uh, complicate them once you get the in- to the Indy car. So, uh, you know, rookie this year, but not a rookie for the Indy 500. I mean, what, uh, what, what, do, you, <laughs> what do you know from uh, last year, uh, you know, that you can uh, bring into this year to help, uh, you know, help you, uh, you know, fight for, uh, fight for the podium? Yeah, I think the main thing is just maintaining the weekend, maintaining the stress, having an idea of, you know, especially the Indy 500, how to pace yourself for that entire week, how to kind of prepare yourself for the Indy 500, the 500-mile race. Uh, so it's just nice to have kind of that experience of what's all going to be thrown at you so you can just deal with it a little bit better when you're seeing it for the very first time. Well, and I know, uh, you know, just talking with Alex, you, you've got the pressure of, uh, you know, the GP, and then you turn around and next weekend, especially with bumping coming back, I mean, that's a big deal, you know, and there's a lot of pressure into that weekend. And then you've got race week, and then you turn around and double in Detroit, and you've got Texas. I mean, you guys, it's, uh, it's a heck of a swing for the next few weeks. Yeah, I, I want to ask my teammates if uh, the being tired thing is normal because, <laughs> you know, that's, that's one of the things that is new for me is just having such a busy schedule. But, you know, each weekend it gets a little easier, and I think, you know, we are here for the Indy GP, and <laughs> that's the thing with, with it being the start of the month of May. We're, we're all excited about the Indy GP, but honestly, we're all kind of thinking about the Indy 500 in the back of our minds. So, you know, that's one nice thing about this only being a two-day schedule is, you know, you get through practice practice qualifying in a single day you go to sleep wake up it's race day you get that out of the way and then everyone's back to thinking about the one thing they want to win which is the indy 500 so and you know you've been around motorsport for a long time what's uh you know this last question but what's what's it like being a driver at the indy 500 i mean i I see people coming out of the woodwork i mean it's like you can't go anywhere around the track or the speedway and probably anywhere in india indianapolis you know without just getting mauled i mean what's that like for you as a driver i mean it's got to be a little bit humbling yeah, it is. It's it's very special, especially being a young guy, because you have spent more time in their position than the position that you are in now. So you know, I remember. There, right? Yeah, exactly. I remember what it's like being a fan. You know, wanting to track down a driver. So for me, that's the humbling side. So you know, I always try to make sure to give people the time of day because you know they're just out here and they're the reason that we are here. So uh, that's pretty special. It can be overwhelming at times when you're trying to get, uh, you know, from point A to point B quickly. But nine times out of ten, the fans are really understanding, so that's helpful. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck this weekend. Good luck the entire month of May. And, uh, you know, thanks for taking the time, Zach. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. That was Zach Veach. Uh, had the opportunity to interview him last year. It was with A.J. Foyt doing a one-off at Indy. And, uh, you know, that was one of those where you go, you know, this this kid, he was a really good interview. Let's note to self, you know, catch back up with him at some point. And it's been taking a year uh, to catch back up with Zach Veach. I can promise you it won't take that long in the future. But uh, this kid, you know me, I like guys that are blue collar, grinded to get where they're at. Never, uh, you know, they fought for everything they have. And, uh, you know, Zach is definitely uh, pushed to get where he's at, networked, communicated, didn't have a ton of money, but somehow, um, you know, found the right people to uh, fund his racing. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I can appreciate about a driver, uh, you know, and, and Zach has definitely been that guy. Uh, you'll notice in the interview, Zach kept laughing and I kept laughing, right? So as we are there, um, Alexander Rossi comes by. He's screwing with Zach, knocked his hat off or something, right? And then uh, I think Ryan Hunter Ray walked by, and Ryan Hunter Ray does something. And then you got one of the one of the engineers for the team is standing behind me and like making weird faces at Zach. And so Zach starts laughing. Like the people at Andretti Autosport, one of my favorite teams in all of racing. They they've definitely embraced what I do. Uh, always help uh, you know line up driver interviews and such. But um, <laughs> I just gotta say, like. 
they are uh, they are awesome, man. Uh, and and the team is definitely a family atmosphere there. And all the drivers, you know, like Zach had said, he he's using all of them. You know what I mean to pick their brains and things like that. And um, uh, they they've just been so embracive of uh, of you know just Zach and other people and uh, the drivers all work together. And it's, it's just funny. I'm not saying it's not that way in other organizations. I mean, you heard Wickens talk about it uh, with, with Schmidt Peterson, but uh, Andretti's just, uh, just, just an awesome group of people. And uh, I've always been welcome there and uh, uh, you know, just big thanks to them for lining up Zach and uh, hope to see him do solid, uh, you know, this, uh, this year at the Indy 500 and uh, in his entire rookie campaign. But uh, uh, we're going to take a short break. We come back wrapping things up here on the down and dirty radio show power by Polaris Razor. So uh, uh, stay tuned. We got uh, got a bit more to talk about here before uh, before we go off air today. So uh, be back after this. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island, the best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount thanks for tuning in to the down and dirty radio show available live online in syndication on networks across the u.s and available internationally on the american forces network all right and we are back here wrapping things up on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor and a fun show today man kind of an indie car th- theme big thanks to connor daly zach veach uh, Robert Wickens, uh, Schmidt Peterson Motorsport, Andretti Autosport, um, obviously Amy Hood helping kick things off. Uh, so yeah, fun show. Uh, some amazing guests. We've got more of it next week. We'll have Graham Rahal and Alexander Rossi on the show, as well as probably some Lucas Oil winners, uh, maybe some Rally winners. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely more IndyCar theme the next two weeks. 
it's the month of May, right? It's happening. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you guys. Uh, I will next week. Uh, we're going to be airing on Monday, um, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, the way it's got to be. I am going to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, I am going to uh, be there to uh, – uh, to do the ARCA race, right? Uh, General Tire, big sponsor of ARCA. We're going to be hanging out with a lot of the ARCA drivers as well as some NASCAR drivers. Uh, so I am going to be at uh, the General Tire ARCA 150 there at Charlotte Motor Speedway and uh, also uh, hopefully catching up with a few NASCAR drivers. So uh, should be a good time uh, had by all. Um, so, um, you know, be on the lookout for that. But uh, I fly out Tuesday, so we're going to be doing a Monday show next week. So be prepared for that. If you're listening to in national syndication, nothing changes. Just to you online listeners so um that's happening next week uh thanks to all of you guys for tuning in big thanks to polaris general tire subaru vision wheel casey highlights gibson exhaust dirtfish impact optimus motor shield pro terracross blue outer resort and casino um I am at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. Amy is at Amy Hood 71. Uh, use the coupon code JB Dirtfish for 15% off at Dirtfish Rally School. And, um, you know, make sure and rate, review, subscribe to uh, the Down and Dirty Radio Show as well as Project Action on uh, on iTunes. And if you leave a rating and a review, if you leave the review, if you leave uh, the your Twitter, Instagram, at username in the body of the review, and I see that on either show, uh, I'll follow you back on social media. So. So uh, easiest way to get a follow for me is to uh, to do that. Make sure and follow our other uh, show account, at Down and Dirty Show, uh, on Instagram as well. And uh, check out all the content we're dropping at downanddirtyshow.com. And uh, make sure and check out our Facebook group. It's uh, Jim Beaver's Action Motorsports Discussion Group uh, there on Facebook. So, um, yeah, man, I will be uh, tweeting and, uh, uh, all week on, uh, on Indy and all the motorsports events coming up. So I'd love to hear from you and definitely chime in on uh, that argument. Amy and I had earlier in the show. Um, I'd love to have your opinion on uh, where the racing capital of the world is. Um, Be safe. As always, game on. 